All right, hey guys. So today we're going over intro to defensive security. And uh, we'll just go through task one here. Offensive security focuses on one thing, breaking into systems. Breaking into security might be achieved through exploits, bugs, abusing insecure setups, and taking advantage of uh, access control policies, amongst other things, red teams and, and penetration tests are specialized in offensive security. Okay, great. So it goes over the different teams, and I'm going to quickly go over this so we can just get to the flag. And uh, it asks here, which team focuses on defensive security? Uh, well, as we read through this, or as you may have read through this, um, you know, you have your red teamers who are offensive. And in red team, I, I want you to, to understand the term red team is uh, a team that specializes in not just offensive security, but also emulating an advanced persistent threat, utilizing their tactics, techniques, and procedures. Um, whereas like a pen penetration tester might utilize any tactics, techniques, and procedures just to gain access to the network, right? Whereas a red teamer may use only uh, specific tactics, techniques, and procedures to actually gain access trying to emulate uh, an APT. So I think that's very important as you continue through this room and you try to differentiate red teaming versus penetration testing, yes, they are alike terms, but kind of different here. So let's take a look here. And, um, you know, the team uh, opposite to that is going to be your blue team. Your blue team is going to be your SOC analyst, you know, um, your threat intelligence, digital forensics, and malware analysis. They're all going to utilize those different topics, those, um, and that, that all falls within the blue team, right? Um, so the answer to this one is blue team. Task two. So in this task, we cover two main topics related to defensive security. And so they talk about SOC, threat intelligence, digital forensics, uh, response, and uh, you know security operation center. If you're not aware of that, that's uh, the hub of everything cybersecurity. It could even include physical security. You may have cameras in there. Um, but um, any events that occur will be analyzed by the SOC and determine whether or not those are actually incidents, then they'll be triaged appropriately. And threat intelligence can be utilized to help filter down um, everything that we're getting as far as, you know, who's a threat, what's a threat, what can cause risk to our organization, or filtering that down through threat intelligence to um, focus on the threats to our industries and to our business uh, in particular, right? All right, and then you have digital forensics, which, uh, you know, is a part of, maybe a part of the incident response process if they actually go through and do the digital forensics, if this actually may be taken to court. Um, however, it should be done in general. You know, you never know. You may be able to take those people to court. So, um, it's analyzing um, the incident that occurred. And then malware analysis. Uh, well, it's malware analysis. I don't know how to say some more about that one. So what would you call a team of cybersecurity professionals that monitor a network and its system for malicious events? We will call that the Security Operations Center, the SOC. What does... DFIR stand for digital forensics and incident response. What kind of malware requires the user to pay money to regain access to files? And that's going to be ransomware. They're going to want to ransom um, and therefore ransomware. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to task two here. So task two, we get a little um, site here and we're going to eventually get a flag. By the way, I put all my flags either in the description or if there's tons of flags or code, I'll put it in uh, the comment section because the description has a character limit. So I'm going to click here, view site, and uh, this looks like one of those ones where you just kind of click through it. Uh, but here we have something that looks like a seam. Um, 
you know, you may have something like Splunk. This looks very similar to what you would see in Splunk. Uh, event inspects the alert in your scene dashboard, find the malicious IP address from the alerts, make a note of it, and then click on the alert to proceed. Uh, so here we have a successful SSH authentication on port 22 from this IP address, unauthorized connection attempt detected from this IP address, the same one that um, actually was successfully able to log in. So that's that's a little concerning there. You have a user John Doe logging in successfully, uh, multiple failed attempts from John Doe, and a login failure specific account password set expired. So um, let's go ahead and click on let's see your malicious IP alert and take note of it. All right, so I'll just take note of that IP address. If I click on it, let's see, here we go. So I clicked on that second one. Um, that was a failure. And let's see here. So we can input the IP address here. And we'll check it, submit here. There are many open source databases out there, like Abuse, IPDB, and Cisco Intelligence, where you can perform reputation and location checks for IP addresses. Most security analysts use these tools to aid them with alert investigations. You can also make the internet safer by reporting the malicious IPs, for example, on Abuse, PDB. Now that we know the IP address is malicious, we need to escalate it to a staff member. So it looks like if we're the analyst here, we determine this is malicious, we're going to escalate it up. Uh, this is no longer just an event. We think that this is a um, incident and it should be triaged appropriately. Uh, this IP address here was found in a database and it looks like it may belong to a Chinese mobile communication corporation. Um, so this is a bit concerning here. And, uh, you know, this is, this is pretty good. In Intel, I really like this, so we'll click next here. All right, we shouldn't worry too much if it was failed authentication attempt, but you probably know it's a successful authentication attempt from the malicious IP address. Let's declare a small incident event and escalate it. There's some great staff working at the company, but you won't want to escalate this to be the wrong person who is not in charge of your team or department. So we're going to escalate this to the security, uh, let's see, who's this guy? Sock team lead. I like how they, why do you put him on the bottom? <laughs> He's just here on the bottom. I, if I expand this out, I wonder if you can see him. Anyhow, I'm going to pick the Sock team lead, right? Uh, that make no sense to send it to sales executives. He probably wouldn't even understand what an IP address uh, is. And then you have the security consultants, um, which maybe you may have like a contractor, right? They may be a consultant, but uh, I'd rather send it to the team lead if, yeah. And then you have the information security architect who is probably structuring the architect. I wouldn't expect them to triage this. So let's go ahead and choose that staff member, okay? You got permission to block the malicious IP and now you can proceed and implement block rules. Block the malicious IP on the firewall and find out what message they left for you. All right, so now we're just gonna input the IP address here and it should uh, put this block rule um, and we'll just go ahead and block it here. And now that we blocked it, we are given the flag. So we can just take that flag, copy it and paste it here. Um, so this is pretty cool. You know, the fact that they walk you through what an alert would look like, and then the blocking actions of that, you know, um, tracing where these IP addresses are coming at, coming from, uh, you know, you know, signets and, and all that. It and this is really used in the real world. Um, it's implemented, and I would have. It would have been cool if they let you do like a command for like a Cisco firewall or something, rather than this GUI. I mean. You can utilize the GUI, but it cool, feels more command line, terminal oriented. Um, so that's that's pretty awesome. So you got the flag, guys, we're done. That's it for this one. Um, but one thing I do want to show you really quick is uh, the fact that I've made quite a few videos for the junior penetration tester path, but they're 
towards the end of the path where people struggle a little bit more with. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the gap here. So you can see I made the first video and it got a lot of views. So I'm going to continue down the uh, the track and make more videos. So if you're um, doing the junior penetration tester, you may know these rooms take a while to do. They take a few hours to do. Um, you know, TriHackMe will tell you that. So what I recommend you do is that you like and subscribe to this so that you can view the videos that I'm releasing so you can follow along with it and know that I always give you the flag and I always walk you through it and I always give you a uh, kind of like an explanation of everything. You always get the flag. So I won't, I won't play any games with that. Right. So I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed because according to um, the information I have here, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, we have less than like, 98% are pretty much not subscribed. So 2% are subscribed. So if you subscribe, I just greatly appreciate it. And, you know, you're definitely helping out the child channel. You're helping out other people who may be interested in this content. Another reason to subscribe is that not just will you be able to catch up with all the videos I'm releasing, but I'm also releasing videos on things like the CISSP, right? I'm going to take the EJPT eventually, and I'll release a video on that as well. So you always stay up to date on all my content. Uh, that way, you can achieve these certifications and gain this experience as well so that you are well on your way to making six figures. All right. Well, you have a good one. Danny out.